This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I create a clown pass render for use with Photoshop masking? So to start off, I have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have this gun model here loaded in. And this gun model consists of eight different subtools. And let's say I want to come through, and I want to generate a clown pass render from this model so that each of these subtools here have a solid color applied to them that I can use inside of Photoshop to establish masking. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to come through I'm going to change my material on the model here. So I'm just going to navigate over here and I'm just going to get a material that's a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to select this skin shade 4. Now to generate a clown pass of this model here I'm going to use the poly grouping option inside of ZBrush. So if I navigate over here to the polyframes here and simply turn this on and then I'm going to disable line by just clicking this line option here. You're going to notice I'm going to get a flat colored display of the polygrouping that's associated with that subtool. So with this, I can come through and assign a single polygroup to every one of these subtools. And this will generate a clown pass effect across the model by each subtool. So to come through and assign a single polygroup to a subtool, just first make sure you have that subtool selected. Then if you come down to the bottom here, open up the polygroups area here, and then simply do a group visible. This will apply a single polygroup to whatever is visible on that subtool. So as you can see, that area had multiple polygroups on it, and when I came over here and clicked group visible, it just now assigned a single polygroup across that whole tool. So with this, you can come through on each of your subtools here and apply this process. So clicking the subtool, going down to the polygroup area here, and then simply clicking group visible, and that will assign a new polygroup to that area. Now once you go through and have a single polygroup established to all your subtools, you simply now just need to make sure you still have that polyframe option on with line turned off. And when you do a BPR render, it's going to render the entire model with just polygrouping. So you can see every single part of the model here has now had this polygrouping applied. Now, you're getting some shadows and effects on your model here, and this is because I still have a matte cap material applied to my model. So if I want this to be perfectly flat, I can come over here and change my material to flat color. And now that it's in flat color, if I apply the BPR again, it's going to re-render the model in flat color, and you're going to get that clean breakup without any shadows being applied. So see, now I'm getting a accurate representation of all those polygroups that are applied to this model in a flat form, thus creating a clown pass of your model. Now, the process is a little bit involved if you have to come through each one of your subtools and then scroll down to the bottom here and click Group Visible. So there is a way to speed this up, and we can automate this process using a simple macro inside of ZBrush. So let's just go through quick. And I'm just going to generate a macro here that's going to look at all your subtools you have on your model and go through and apply a single polygroup to each subtool. So I'm going to navigate to the top here to this macros tab and just open this up. And I'm just going to click this little button here to dock it to the side. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to click this new macro button here. Now, once you click this macro, anything you do inside of ZBrush after you click this is going to be recorded. So I want to come through and just think about how you would do this on a model really quick to automate this process. So first let's come over to the subtool palette here and then just let's click on that subtool. So something that's not the top subtool. And now I'm going to come over here and click new macro. And this is going to pop up this little thing here that's going to ask you to initialize. We're just going to click no. So now that we're in recording mode, we now need to think about how we would come through and apply a polygroup to all the individual subtools. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we have the top subtool selected. So I'm going to come to this up arrow here. And if you hover over this, you'll see that it says press shift to select the first subtool. So I'm going to hold shift and then click. And so that is going to now select that first subtool. And that step has now been recorded in the Mac. Now the next thing we want to do after we have the first subtool selected is come to the bottom here and now do a group visible. So now we have applied a single polygroup to that model there. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to select the subtool below it. So we're going to do the arrow here, and we're just going to click down. So now we have recorded three steps into our macro. 
We've recorded selecting the top subtool. We've recorded grouping visible and we've recorded select the next subtool. So that should be enough for this macro to automate the process. So I'm going to come to the macro tab up here and now simply click end macro. Now when you click end macro, this little window is going to pop up and this is going to be in your Z startup macros folder. And here we just need to create a new folder. I'm going to create a new folder here and I'm going to call this polygroup subtools. Accept that and I'm going to double click that. And then in here, I'm going to assign a name to the macro here, polygroup subtool. And then I'm just going to click save. So now that macro has been saved. Come over here, you'll see I have a new macro over here called Polygroup Subtools. And if I come through and click this, it's going to select that top subtool, do that group visible, and then select down. Well, this is great, but it's only affecting one of our subtools over here. And we want to automate this so it processes the entire list. So one really nice thing about macros is that you can edit them after you have created them. So I'm going to navigate to the folder with that macro in it. So here we go. This is our ZBrush 407 Z Startup Macros folder. And here we have that Polygroup Subtools folder. So I'm going to open that up. And with this macro, you'll see there are three files here. And I'm just going to double click the text document here. And now this is going to open up in our text window here. So in this case, Notepad. And in here, I'm just going to edit some of this here. So you can see these are the three actions we recorded. We have the key press shift plus subtool select up. We have the tool polygroups group visible, and we have the tool subtool select down. So I'm going to navigate to the end of this I key press one, and then just press enter twice here. And then I'm going to do bracket loop comma bracket sub capital T tool, capital G, get, capital C, count. And then a close bracket, and then a comma. I'm going to press enter twice there. And then I'm going to go to the area behind, select down, press enter twice, and then do a closed bracket. So what we have added here is we have added a loop. So this loop is going to get the number of subtools we have in our tool, and then process these functions here that many times. So our tool had eight subtools, so it's going to loop eight times the polygroups group visible and select down. So this should allow us to automate the entire process across any ZBrush tool we load in. So I'm just going to save this to go file save and that will now update that macro. And now I'm going to go back into ZBrush. I'm going to go to the macro tab here and I'm going to click reload all macros. So now we have reloaded the macros here. I'm just going to turn my polyframes on here. And I'm just going to select one of these subtools that does not have that process happened yet. And now I'm just going to simply click Polygroup Subtools. So when we click this, it's going to go to the top, and then it's going to loop through all the other subtools there. So now I should have a single polygroup applied to every one of these subtools. So now if I switch back to that flat color material, make sure I have polyframes on with the line option turned off, and now click Render. I'm going to get a really nice clown pass render here with each of these subtools broken into a different polygon. So that's the process of how to create a clown pass inside of ZBrush and also how to create a macro that will automate the process of going through each one of these subtools and doing a polygroups group visible. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.